All right, so in this video, we're going to look at how to go from the ABC frame to the DQ frame. So essentially, I mean, when you have a three-phase system, you have three different phasers. Uh, in this case, I've drawn them generally as FA, FB, and FC, because they can be any phaser, but it can be like a voltage, it can be a current, I mean, it can be any other three-phase system. Uh, but what you can do is you can project it, a three-phase system, onto a two-phase or two-coordinate frame, if you'd like. And the, the convenience of that is, of course, because you don't have to deal with three components anymore. And in most cases, well, in all cases, uh, we can actually express those two coordinates as a real and an imaginary component. And we're very familiar with complex, um, I guess complex math and the arithmetic that comes with it and all of the trick tips and tricks, I guess, uh, when it comes down to doing things conveniently using um, complex numbers. So essentially what we're trying to do when we go from an A, and let's say from an ABC to an alpha beta first, is we say that, let's say there's a coordinate frame, and we call this thing the alpha and beta frame. So what you can do is you can decompose every one of these vectors or these phasers to somehow land on the alpha and beta frame. So you see FA is already on the alpha frame, so the FA is entirely on the alpha frame. FB has a component, and I mean, if you know that, for instance, I mean, and we do know this, you know that this is 120 degrees and this is 90 degrees, so that means this angle inside there, this angle here must be 30 degrees and this is 90, so you can find the magnitudes of these very easily using simple trigonometric ratios. So you can decompose FA, FB, and FC to go, or I guess, I guess project it to be on the alpha and beta frames. So the, the, the way you do that is you can say F alpha, F beta, and let's write it in matrix form because it's, it's a transformation so it's easy to write this way. And here you have 0, 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3, and this is F A, F B, F C. And if you, if so if you take your signal F A, or your, your three phase signal F A, F B, F C, multiply the three by this uh, matrix, you'll get the alpha and the beta coordinates. Now, this is alpha beta, sorry, ABC to alpha beta. Now, in an, in a three phase machine, let's say in an, in an induction machine, the, the flux rotates, the machine obviously rotates, I mean, and the flux rotates with that. So it's kind of like a physical phenomenon that the, they're linked together, right? So the rotation of the machine is linked to the rotation of the flux. Now the problem is, when it comes to control, if you have a rotating flux, the challenge is now that your control becomes much more complicated because from a control standpoint, your signal is not is changing in time, or your, your, your control variable is changing in time. So what we do is we use what's called the DQ frame. So the DQ frame is, is basically one step further from the alpha beta frame. I guess we can draw it on the same axis. Let's try that. So maybe get rid of this. And what we try to do then is, well, actually, no, let's not do it. Let's go to a new one because it'll probably be convoluted and it's better to clear things up now rather than live with uncertainties later. Let's say you have an alpha beta frame like so. So this is the alpha beta frame that we just looked at above, alpha beta frame. And the DQ frame is essentially saying that I have a two coordinate system, but relative to the alpha beta frame, it is phase shifted. And it's phase shifted by rho. And this we call the D axis and this we call the Q axis. And it stands for direct and quadrature and not Dairy Queen. So essentially when you can when you can align, and so I mean, I guess what's the what's the point of doing this is if this these two are ninety degrees phase shifted relative to one, or phase or just oriented to one another. Uh, what's the benefit of this? When you have a phaser in space, as it travels or as it goes through its phase or or its period, let's say from zero to two pi, essentially it rotates around this coordinate axis. Now, if it rotates around the coordinate axis at some speed, 
then that means it's always, I mean, at one at one instant it might be here, at one instant it might be here, and at one instant it might be here, I mean, depending on which part of the phase you're in. So by rotating this, well, first you align it, you have to align the d-axis with the with the phaser you're actually trying to, trying to control. Um, once you align the axis with that component, and then you set the axis, again, this is control, so it's programmed somewhere, right? Uh, and then you you uh, you rotate your dq axis with the same speed as the phaser right so if my phaser is lined up here let's say if my phaser is lined up here and my phaser let's call it and this is some generic f now as f well i should say that's the, the d component it's not the i guess we can say that this is f d this is the d component so you line the dq axis with the D component, as this thing rotates through space, or through its phase, whatever you want to call it, um, what happens is it appears to the controller and the program that is monitoring the phaser that this signal is not rotating at all. Think of it this way, if you're on a bus, it's, if you're on a bus, or, or somebody is on a bus, and there's a car here, or a, or a UFO, whatever you want, whatever it is. And if you're traveling at the same speed, people on the bus, so anybody that's sitting on the bus, will observe the person in the car as not moving. Right? So it seems as though the per that neither of you are moving, because relative to one another, you're not moving at all. So it's, an, it's the same analogy that can be drawn here. If the DQ axis is set to rotate at the same speed as this D component, you're essentially looking at a signal that appears to be DC. And now we know that DC uh, signals or variables or quantities are much easier to control than AC, and the control implementation of a DC uh, quantity is much easier than an AC quantity. And so it's highly desirable to have something like this. All that aside, how do we actually do it? It's fairly simple. So we can do another sort of matrix relationship. So you have FD and you have FQ. So that's the direct and the quadrature components. And this is cos rho. This is sine rho. This is minus sine rho. And this is cos rho. And here you have F alpha and F beta. So there's two ways to do this, essentially. You can either go from ABC to alpha beta, and then from alpha beta to DQ. But there's another way to do this as well. So the other way to do it is as follows. Um, and this is, I guess, an easier approach. If you have, if you have a space phaser, F, let's call it. Um, well, if you have three quantities, F, A, F, B, and F, C, I should say. Uh, three functions, three time varying functions, and the three time varying functions, I think we've discussed this in a previous video, let's start from before. So if you have f a of t plus f b t plus f c of t equals zero, then you can define a space phasor, essentially, follows. So you can say that f t, or sorry, f in general, is two-thirds of f a of t plus f b t e to the j 2 pi over 3 plus f c of t e to the j 4 pi over 3. Then you can say that f d q, I guess, is equal to f e to the j rho, to minus j rho. So essentially what you can do is you can take these three signals, leave the first one as it is, multiply the second one by e to the j 2 pi over 3, multiply the third one by e to the j 4 pi over 3, multiply the whole thing by 2 over 3, and then you take that resulting phasor, this thing here, you take this and you multiply it by e to the minus j rho, and you have your dq transformation. So usually this one is easier to apply, in my opinion, especially in like some uh, al um, programming algorithm or whatever you want to do it. 
because you have these three signals, just multiply them by these things, and then multiply the whole thing by two over three, and you have and you multiply it by e to the j minus rho, and you have your result as opposed to going through these matrix operations and such. So, if you want to implement this in like let's say MATLAB and Simulink, for instance, what would that look like? So you'd have you'd have something that looks like this because in some of our videos we use ABC to DQ transformation. And it's important that you know how to implement these things in um, in simulation or in practice or however you choose to implement them. So you have these three, they add together. Multiply this by something. Why don't we fill it out as we go? Let's say you have three currents, ISA, ISB, ISC. Now the first component gets multiplied by one. Well, we've always used green for the inside, let's use green. The first one gets multiplied by one. Second one gets multiplied by two pi over three. Three, not two. Three. Third one gets multiplied by e to the j four pi over three. Add the three together, multiply the result by two over three. What are you left with? You're left with is as a vector or a space phaser. Then, what do you do after that? You take your is, you multiply it with something, you multiply it with what? Let's say you multiply it with two things. I guess this chain should have two things. Uh, maybe we can do it like this so we don't have to go further down. So here you have rho, and this is your angle. First multiply it by minus j. Then you apply your exponential function. And you're left with, after that, e to the minus j rho. I s e to the minus j rho is the result here. E to the minus j rho. And then in MATLAB or whatever simulation software you're using, there should be a way, I mean in MATLAB there certainly is, there's a way to, there's like a block, it's like a, it basically, um, it, it gives you the real and the imaginary component of a signal. So you'll say, well, maybe we should do that in green as well, because we always do these things in green. So this is the real, and this is the imaginary. And then the output of this would be two signals, and the output here is ISD. This is ISQ. Essentially what you want to do in this step is extract real and that looks like it says read. I should say real and imaginary components, right? So that's the objective here. If you do this, you generate ABC to DQ frame. So whenever you see an ABC to DQ frame in any of the videos where we discuss the control of uh, induction machines or anything of the sort. This is what's going on inside there, basically. So you go from ABC to DQ like this. Or alternatively, you could implement these matrices and do it that way if, if that's the way you prefer. Both are equally correct. So this is a bit on the transformation. I mean, there, I mean, I guess you can go into greater details and you can actually decompose the signals and, and, and do all the steps and the derivations, but that kind of stuff isn't really important for this discussion because it's it's trivial. I mean, like you have it's basic trigonomet uh, trigonometric ratios here. Um, so yeah, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them, leave them in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe to support the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.